Hi everyone, I just released my new masterclass called Narrowband Fast Track. And this is an introductory course, but it's also really comprehensive. I begin with a primer that explains many of the aspects that really put together a cohesive story when trying to describe why and what you do in terms of narrowband image processing. I'm going to release the first handful of sections here on YouTube so that you can take advantage of the information, but you can also see how I like to put together a course just like this. Of course, the main part of the course where you are doing the image processing, that's in the later sections, but at least you can begin to see what it looks like, and I'll just describe what the rest of the course is all about. Narrowband Fast Track is a course that is a part of a much larger collection of videos on my website that's called Pixinsight Horizons. When you visit my website, watch these videos at the top of the page. They explain about the content and its organization and everything that is on my website. I'm going to be navigating to Narrowband Fast Track. This is the course, and you'll see this is all publicly available, all of the titles that are part of this particular course. I have released the first four sections here on YouTube, but of course there are many, um, there are many more. And in the beginning, I, as I generally do, I often cover the concept, the fundamental ideas that are important in this case to narrowband image processing. One special kind of topic is of course the use of uh, pedestals for calibration. Then there are some items that you want to pay attention to, to be attentive of when we configure WBPP. That's covered. We also need to look at, for example, the histograms, literally the brightness of the signal in each of the bands, in each of the color bands that we're going to be mapping, because that affects how we will map that information. We get to choose what colors, what color palette we're going to use, and to do that effectively, we need to really understand in depth what the data is showing us. Then, of course, we're going to choose of uh, from a variety of combined methods, and I show all of those methods. In addition, it's very important to point out that in narrowband image processing, at least as it is done today, we will take care of the nebula independent from the stars. And then, of course, we might concern ourselves with the various ways in which we are going to include the stars in the data. There are methods where you can uh, create colored stars from the narrowband data itself, or you can incorporate uh, regular broadband RGB stars. After covering all of that kind of general information, then I move on to actually providing, of course, a PDF which lists what is a, a skeleton-like workflow. You just can't be too specific because there are so many different permutations and ways of doing narrowband image processing, and that's what I demonstrate in the workflow videos. All of these videos come with data so that you can follow along. You can see the final result, the image itself. Hopefully you find compelling, and if you want images like uh, are being shown here, I show you exactly how to do it, and you can do this with your own data to produce beautiful narrowband results. Here is an example of a monochrome example where we're doing SHO type imaging, though I include other topics like how would you handle that same data if you're going to be employing uh, illuminance. So I also have an LRGB demo. Then moving along, here is an HOO example of producing uh, an image. Again, this is monochrome. I'll get to the OSC in just a moment. Comes with its own data. Uh, but it so happens that this data did have S2 as well. And as part of this course, there are innovations. There are specialized ways, uh, ways that I think make it easier to create these beautiful color pictures. So I have an innovation here of incorporating S2 in a colorized version in an already produced HOO image. And that is a very powerful tool uh, that you can put in your back pocket when producing these kinds of images. Finally, of course, there are all of the topics that revolve around one-shot color camera imagery and the use of dual band filters. So I have an example here where we're doing HOO type uh, image processing, which means you're using a single dual band filter. But it so happens that from this example, I can also do uh, this is a special case where we have H alpha and O3 as well as S2 and O3. And then you can extract those in a proper way to give yourself all three 
uh, of those bands that can be mapped together. And I demonstrate how to do that. But that's not all. I continue. I always seem to add more videos to any of my courses. I have an example here of an update of the processing for this Dragons of Aura, as well as that same specialized method that I mentioned for creating a Helix Nebula that looks like this. I hope you can see the depth and breadth of this particular course. I will be adding to it, and I think you should check it out today. Don't forget, your purchase of Narrowband Fast Track can be used towards the purchase of Horizons, so it's a gateway to an even larger universe of content.